Hey folks, welcome to episode 11 of our AM transmitter. So um, this is the episode you've all been waiting for. <laughs> the one that I, uh, I go back to my usual pattern. What do I mean by that? Alright, so I've got this thing um, all connected obviously. I've got the correct capacitor there, it's the 250 Pico. And um, I can't get a clean signal out of it. It's noisy, there's a lot of noise. A lot of static, a lot of electrical hum, and I've been pulling my brain, my hair out, trying to figure out what it is. Then I came to a realization of something, and I'm going to share it with you because you know I'm not afraid to do that. Look how busy it is under there. Look at all that wire. Look at all those components so close together. If you look at this output tube right here, look at all these wires running around it, right? If you look up over here where the tuning cap goes, I've got a pair of capacitors right there. This mess over here, the mixer tube, again, a bunch of wires right next to a 120 volt AC uh, pilot light. All this stuff is okay. But the issue is that it's too busy. There's too many wires, there's too many things crossing each other, and especially in the output section, and especially on the, on the tuning section. It just isn't going to work right. This thing was not designed to work this way, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Let me put up this picture, and then I'll explain what I'm going to do next. And here's the underside of the one that Rick built. Look at all that space. Look at that. Very minimal. You'll see that most of the components are tied directly to the tube sockets. Just like that. No wires all over the place. All the wires that are run are in one spot right here. That's where my design is off. Okay? Okay, so you, you could see the difference, right? On the, on the one that Rick built, very minimal, right? There's a couple of wires that run over here. It's a lot of empty real estate. So a couple of things I realized. A, my chassis is much smaller than what Rick used. Um, it's a lot smaller, actually. So the chassis that I'm using, let's measure it. chassis that I'm using is a foot, okay? The one that Rick used, I'm pretty sure, is probably 15 inch. That's also, I think, the size that John's was in Arkansas. So right off the bat, I'm limited by what I can do. On the top, where I had all those, those wooden boxes stacked, I had to stack them because there was no other place to mount anything on the top of the chassis, right? If you remember the top of this chassis, let me flip it. There's room for a transformer, the antenna, and the coil. That's it. All right? If you remember the one that Rick did, I'll show you the picture right here. Here's the top of Rick's unit. See all that stuff there? And you can see he had room for the meter back here. So, what did Ron do? <laughs> Ron bought another chassis, and I'm going to disassemble this one very carefully. I'll be able to reuse all the parts, including the sockets and the components. And I'm going to move it to a 15 inch by 3 chassis. So I'm going to get another 3 inches here, and I'm going to get another inch in height. And that's going to be what I need to do this correctly. And I'm going to stay more true to the diagram or the wiring that Rick did on his. Uh, and the, the key for that for me was, if, you're, if you recall, um, Rick was experimenting with shielding. Let me show you an example of that right here. So that told me that um, there is an issue with noise in the design, and you've got to be really, really careful about how you mount things. In the original um, setup that I showed you, I had a box on top of here. I had the wires for the tuning cap, for the power switch, and for the meter, and all running up in one hole in the chassis. Bad design, right? That was something I didn't think about. And actually, our good subscriber, JP, warned me about that in episode 4A. Didn't pay attention. Um, so, uh, so that's going to be the plan. So the chassis will be here on, I think, tomorrow, and I will lay it out. And I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, lay it out very much the same way that Rick did his. And I guarantee you, when I get that done, it's going to work. Now, can I get something out of this? Yes, I am able to transmit, but it's so noisy, um, it's just not clear. Okay, so, um, so that's where I am. And you know, as I said at the top of the video, 
Lesson learned. This is how Ron learns. Ron learns by building and ripping it apart and doing it over. No, no difference here. <laughs> so, um, so that's the plan. So I'm going to spend uh, the rest of today and tomorrow, which is Sunday, uh, taking this whole thing apart, removing all the parts, cleaning up all the uh, the pins on the on the tube sockets, preparing everything for the new chassis when it gets here, and I will start to put things together very much the way that Rick did, which includes. Um, direct connection of components to the tube sockets right what do I mean by that I'll give you a great example if you look right here uh, which is the um, this is the components that go to the power switch let me show you this right here right, here's the power switch so you've got a 1 meg resistor 100 K resistor and a, a 0 0.1 microfarad cap on Rick's design he's got everything connected directly to the output tube on mine, I've got a bunch of wires running over to a terminal strip. And you see everything's crossing everything. That's a problem. So that's the plan, folks. So in episode 12, you're going to start to see this take shape differently on a different chassis. So uh, so that's where I've been. That's what I've been learning. And uh, now I've got the, the job ahead of me of removing all these components. No problem. I didn't go crazy when I soldered them, so it'll be easy to do. And uh, And that's the plan, as they say. All right, so I will see you in the next video, and, uh, and uh, thanks for watching.